Howdy, y'all. It's Russell back with Gwinnett Lawns and beautiful. I had to put that blue sky behind me. Look at that. Atlanta, Georgia. Today is June the 3rd, 2023. And we've got a really nice breeze. It is absolutely gorgeous outside. And the best thing is, it's going to be almost 90 degrees today. It may hit 90. So on today's video, I'm going to show you how to hopefully permanently fix the exhaust valve guide issue on our beloved Honda HRX 217s with the one GCV 190. Uh, this will also work with the 160 engine. They have um, a nasty habit of having the valve guide work its way out of the block over time. And what happens is it will eventually um, if the exhaust valve freezes up, it will um, most likely crack or snap the rocker arm in half. And, of course, your engine's not going to run when it does that. But um, there is a fix. If you took the engine to your, or took the mower to your dealer and it was still under warranty, they would replace the cylinder. So these cylinders aren't very expensive. They're under 100 bucks. But I'm going to show you an easier way to do this now if this this engine right here actually runs fine okay but I do have the problem uh, I've had it happen twice the last time it happened I did a video on it uh, I show you exactly we're gonna open this up and I, but I show you exactly how to take a socket and just tap the valve guide back into the block it's not hard uh, but hopefully I'm gonna show you using this part number Okay, you can just freeze the video. It's also in the description link. This part is like five bucks. So let me, uh, let's just get right to it. If you want to know more about the problem, just search my channel. Or maybe I'll have a link. And uh, I replaced the uh, rocker arm. It's very easy. Uh, this problem is more of an annoyance than it is difficulty. All right, so... Uh, this is just 10 millimeter screws or bolts and this is the valve cover now i have since um a couple times taken this on and off and funny it, it didn't leak at all i am going to show you guys how to make a gasket for this so we can get rid of this stupid uh honda bond or rtv because normally when you take these off you have to pry them off and they end up bending and these aren't expensive but why waste money if you don't need to right all right so this is the exhaust valve side this is the intake valve um and the way that these come out these little pins well let's get this to top dead center first or close to it to where the valves are the uh, rocker arms are loose okay this pin just push it up with your finger it just slides like that and this is the rocker arm this is the replacement rocker arm i have a video where i showed you what i did but this pen just slides in like that no tools needed all right so i i have already adjusted the valves and in, since we're not moving the adjuster screw uh, we don't even need to do any valve adjustment now if you're doing this because you have a crock a cracked rocker arm already well just go look at my other video and you'll see how to fix that and address that. So same thing, I'm just pushing this up. It comes out very easily. And this is the intake rocker arm. You can't get them mixed up because there's a right and a left. It just, it won't fit any other way. So whatever you do, if your engine's still running, do not mess with the adjuster screws. I recommend you check the valves anyway. So the way that you see if it's stuck or not, just press Press on this, see how the valve's going in? Both sides, all right. So I'm going to just push this. The camera's gonna take a, a dive here. Have this sitting on a concrete block. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and push this over to where the top retainer, a spring retainer, and then the spring comes out. It doesn't matter whether it goes this way or that way, it's the same on both sides. I just put these aside. Now, one thing I want to caution you about is to make sure that 
the piston is at top dead center because this valve can slide into the um, combustion chamber if the piston is down in the bore. All right, so right here, which my finger's pointing on, is the valve stem guide, or the valve guide. Okay, it's not the valve stem, it's just called the valve guide. It's like, I think it's made of brass. And what happens is this, over time, starts to migrate out of the block a little bit. And when it does that, it causes the exhaust valve to basically seize up, it won't move anymore. You try to push it, it just won't go. And it will usually snap the rocker arm. Um, so mine's happened once. This is the cam gear right here. This is made of some type of super high impact plastic or rubber plastic and uh, it doesn't usually damage this. But so the way that we're gonna fix this is uh, pretty ingenious. I didn't come up with this, somebody else did. I'm gonna take this side off too. Gonna do it like that and pull the spring and all that off. So if you see in here, you see it looks different. This right here is the intake valve stem seal. Okay, it's the intake valve stem seal. That's what this is. That's this part right here. So what I'm going to do is. Since I've got a brand new one right here, okay? And I don't wanna butcher up a brand new part, okay? I'm just gonna put this, oh boy. I just dropped that down in there. <laughs> That's all right, I got it. Be careful. I would suggest stuffing a rag or a paper, clean paper towel in here so you don't do what I just did. But anyway, pull the valve out and put a little load on it, side load, if you can. And just push the new part. Now the reason, I could just modify the new part, but I figured if I got the new part, why not put the new part where it's supposed to be, all right? There. Now, we're gonna take this part right here, which this is a stamped, really thin sheet metal piece. And there's a rubber, there's a um, little spring right here. And we're going to take this rubber that's attached to this, and we're going to remove it. And um, let's go over to where there's a little bit better light, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we have the valve stem seal right here. And you can see there's a little, there's a little tiny spring right here. I'm going to discard that. And this rubber is extremely uh, pliable. And it's very tough. So I'm just going to take a razor blade and try to, uh, there we go. goal is to get rid of the rubber in the center okay but anyway so it's got to pretty much be like that um, and then all we're gonna do is just slip this back on and assemble everything back all right so I've got the piece here and I'm just gonna stick it right like that and so basically what this is gonna do is the spring is going to press on this base right here and this inner part right here um, is basically going to it's like the spring is pressing or keeping the uh, valve guide from coming out now is this enough um, others have done it before and says it is enough pressure so There we go. All right, so you see it's doable. Just make sure that it's in the center on both sides, okay? There we go. So just uh, take your rocker arms. And the reason that you want these at top dead center is because um, if this cam lobe 
where where one of these rock arms are pressing on it you would not be able to get it in there because you would have to overcome the spring pressure but there's not going to be any pressure on it right now all right so it should have plenty of clearance like this so at this point uh, I'm not going to adjust the valves, but at this point you can adjust the valves if you want. Uh, I can check them. I, there's no reason that they would be out of adjustment, but uh, let's do that. All right, so on these mowers, we're going to be checking the exhaust valve first. And the reason, if you want to know how to know which is which, this is the exhaust side. This is the intake. You've got the muffler. You've got the carburetor. So this valve is for the exhaust. This valve is for the intake. So on the... Um, exhaust side it's eight thousandths point zero zero eight and you just want to make sure you've got play in the rockers which we do and you want to put this between the adjusting screw and the head of the valve stem and you should have a hear that a slight drag if you can't get that in there it's too tight if it's super loose you won't have a drag it, there's a little bit of a drag on the intake side intake valve it's 0 0.006 or six thousandths. Same thing. Slight drag. So these valves, I adjusted them uh, earlier. I don't know, a couple, couple weeks ago. And they're perfectly fine. So they're good. So for right now, I'm not going to put any Honda Bond on here. Because I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a gasket for this. Um, out of Felpro items and so I'm just going to put this back on right now I'm just going to snug it on there Let's just talk about this for a minute you've hang, you've hung with me this long I know there are gonna be people in the comments that say you know Honda's are garbage and this and that and I agree the quality of these mowers has gone downhill probably since the Honda Harmony um, but I gotta tell you that as far as a 21 inch push mower that I've used it cuts better than any mower I've ever used. It cuts better than the Trim Star. Yeah, I said it. Okay? You have to get over that. There's nothing, it's, it's, at least on Bermuda, okay? On this southern Bermuda that we got here, there is nothing that cuts better than this mower right here. Now, could the engine design have been improved? Absolutely. I can see they're using rubber. I mean, it works. Okay, let, let's just, let's not complain about it. It works. However, there's a couple of things they should have addressed. Honda's getting out of the mower business anyway. They probably don't care. But they're going to continue to make these engines. That's the problem. So I'm going to run this engine just like it is. There's nothing else I need to do to it other than make the gasket for the valve cover. But I'm going to run this thing every four or five days, cut my yard in the summer just like I always do. And if that valve stem or the valve guide, if that valve guide messes up again, I'm going to let you guys know. I think that spring pressure is going to hold it. I think I don't think it's going to walk out. It could. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just run it, keep it maintained as always, and uh, I will do a video on how to make the gasket because I think if you have one of these mowers, you should check your valve clearances periodically and check that valve stem or the valve guide on your exhaust. If you want to do this trick, uh, do it at your own risk to prevent problems in the future. I'm going to do it on the brand new engine that I get. First thing I do is I'm going to open that valve cover. I ordered a second one of those valve stems. Take the rubber out 
and install it just like I did before, just like I did on this mower. So hopefully it'll never happen. Hopefully I can keep this mower going for another 20 years. We will address the transmission because it's a little slow compared to what the new mower was, compared to what it was um, before when it was new. But it's easily remedied by changing the fluid to the Honda, getting the uh, old fluid out and putting the factory Honda hydrostatic transmission fluid in there. So it's no big deal. I'll do a video on that. But for right now, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've got one of these mowers, try this, try this, uh, this, um, mod we'll call it a modification. Okay. It's definitely not Honda approved. If your mower's under warranty, do this at your own risk. I probably wouldn't do it. Let your dealer just put another cylinder on there. Um, that's what my dealer would have done. But anyway, I fixed that for what? Five bucks. So anyway, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you on the next one. Just like how easy.